Okay, everybody, so this is my spoiler review of The Boys Season 3, Episode 6, Herogasm. So we'll jump into everything that happens before the Herogasm party. And this is so much to unpack here going on. A lot of moving pieces, a lot of crazy things happening, and a lot of characters changing in a lot of ways. So I absolutely love this episode. But one of the few things I didn't like about this episode was the Imagine parody that they did making fun of the celebrities who did this same exact song during the pandemic. Now, I just think that when you're doing satire, when it's that on the nose and the exact same song, it loses a little points for me because anyone could have thought of that. That was really simple. Simple way to make fun of something. So didn't think that humor landed there. A little too easy for me. But getting that nitpick out of the way, oh my god, this episode, first off. So we'll start with a lot of Homelander stuff here. So Homelander sees in this footage that it's Soldier Boy now and that he knows he's the hero of heroes like he says and that there's a statue of him in front of the building and he wants this buried. He doesn't want this getting out and he wants to just kill Soldier Boy himself. He knows it's a threat to him and to Vought. Now what's so fascinating is this other relationship I constantly forget about in the show with Black Noir and Homelander and that he's really Homelander's sidekick at the end of the day probably because he can't say anything and Noir being a former member of Payback Soldier Boy's team knows that Soldier Boy is also going to go after him. So he gets freaked out and takes out the tracking device and runs. Now, why this is so interesting is because it actually breaks Homelander's heart here. This will then lead to a scene with Anthony Starr, who plays Homelander's best acting scene to date. He's already been incredible, but this just tops it here, where it's a very Willem Dafoe-esque scene from Spider-Man when the Green Goblin's talking to himself, Norman Osborn in the mirror. What do you want? To say what you won't. To do what you can't. To remove those in your way. You're seeing these two sides of Homelander where there's that insecure child Homelander side that Stan Edgar always references, but he's a broken man. He wants approval and it's really his human side and that's what the other side of him is calling out and that he wants to get rid of that part. We got to cut that out. And we'll see by the end of the episode, when he looks in the mirror, he is fully going to now embrace that other side of him, that more tyrant, evil, perfect side that he isn't any human and that he's going to let go of these things that make him human, like all the loss he's had for people he's actually wanted approval of and feeling that feeling of wanting the public to like him. He wants that all gone now. And this is the part of him that's keeping him from basically just destroying the world. So... Really interesting stuff, and this scene was just incredible acting by Anthony Starr. I loved it. Also interesting, we don't know yet what's happened with Maeve. You know, having Newman say to Starlight that she thinks she's dead, we know Maeve is probably alive then. Again, we didn't see any body when she was captured, so you're wondering that mystery of where Maeve is. I like what they're doing with Starlight, is that she has basically losing everything. She's in a terrible position. She's basically hitting rock bottom in the situation she's in. And Newman points this out. She takes advantage of that by wanting to use Starlight's exposure, her fans, right, to kind of give her more power to push this education bill. And she wants to have this life different for her daughter in a different world. And that's what she's kind of trying to get Starlight on. But remember, Newman's the type of character that is for herself. And we've seen her blow people's heads up and she tries to even justify it. Yes, these Congress people bullied her, but still she's blown people's heads up. So she is not someone to be trusted. No. Starlight knows that. And that's why Starlight doesn't fall for it. But Newman has a really great moment here where she threatens Starlight and literally makes her nose bleed. I thought that was awesome and a really cool Newman moment. I think the Newman character is a great addition to this show in general. I like learning more and more about her and she's just... This other party that's very powerful and you kind of want to see where she lands but i clearly will think that newman is someone you can't trust and again most people in the show are out for themselves i think really at this point in the show the only people who aren't crazy and out for themselves are mave mother's milk starlight frenchy and kimiko that's it everyone else is off the deep end now everything going on with huey butcher and soldier boy huey's got black goo coming out of his ear so what we're watching with huey and butcher is that they're taking this V24, which again is in its testing phase, and they've referenced that in this season, and that we don't know the full side effects of it, and him having Black Goo is kind of scary, and they're, they're going to get different things happening where they're getting hooked to it clearly, because the way they even shoot it up in this episode is just like drug addicts, but it makes it so much more interesting for these characters, especially Huey, to have 
powers now and it being like the comics. I really, really dig that this season. And I love the humor here with Soldier Boy and Huey and Soldier Boy's referencing things that are way outdated, like certain names of restaurant dressings, references to Bill Cosby and how he sees Bill Cosby. And it just lets Jack Quaid kind of do what he does best with some of that sarcastic humor. And I also really think it's foreshadowing that Huey tries to pick up Soldier Boy's shield and can't. I think that will come back later and that Huey will eventually be able to pick that up at the end of the season, so we'll see. But we see Butcher makes a deal with Soldier Boy that will help you get back payback if you help us get the Homelander. So everything going on with Kamiko and Frenchie here hits ahead with Little Nina. And we also see Shari's there and Little Nina is giving Frenchie the choice to pick between Shari or Kamiko. And this is a very intense scene, dark scene, and you learn more about Frenchie. She's just saying out there, Little Nina, how, again, more messed up stuff he's had done to him in the past and that he's done, but also this trauma he had from his awful father, we find out about that. He made him kneel in glass, which was just crazy. And we get this payoff from just how Kamiko's going to save herself in this scene is from a setup earlier in the episode where she has this popsicle stick. Thank God she decided to have a popsicle because that popsicle stick is going to be what gets her out of those handcuffs. And she still kicks butt here with no powers. My only complaint in this action scene was a little bizarre how they handled Cherry here where she basically is just thrown into a barrel and hits her head and how that's resolved is we just see her later on sleeping on the couch. So I just thought that was strange and didn't really kind of land. Maybe they could have made her a little more useful in this scene. And Karen Fukuharu plays Kimiko is incredible. And I think she's incredibly underrated as an actress. I'm not just saying that because I interviewed her in the past, but no, seriously, especially in this scene where she is stabbing the guy brutally after he brutally punched her. Just really disturbing stuff. And she kills it with her, just her face acting. And that's hard to do with not having to be able to scream or talk as a character. And I love the boys is going that deep and brutal, like the comics this season, like really leaning into that. And we really see that with A-Train, which you're going to get to. But I like thematically in this episode, she says to Frenchie, it was always me. I blame the V for making me a monster, but it was me. So this is really reflective of what's happening with Huey and Starlight, where she's blaming the V for Huey's behavior, but we see Huey actually is more of that monster and these are his choices. So it's a nice reflection of that and that kind of theme of, is this the V a lot of people are just blaming, but it's really just them at the end of the day making these choices. Really strong stuff with Kamiko in general. This whole season, she's been a standout storyline. And we're gonna say the other standout storyline and character this season is Mother's Milk. So we see with Mother's Milk and Starlight, I like these two together just as a pairing on screen. There's something about them that works and that Starlight's kind of MM's moral compass this season. And I mean, Starlight's really the moral compass of everybody this season. She's still got a hero mindset and worrying about just innocent people trying to protect them from Soldier Boy, where everyone else is kind of worried about their own selfish desires. But like I just talked about that theme, this is where MM saying the gun he has is not for Soldier Boy, meaning it's really for Butcher and Huey who betrayed him. And she's like, Huey's not himself right now. And he's like, he's a grown ass man who can make his own choices. This is what MM says. And this is what Starlight will realize by the end of the episode and will kind of open her eyes to what Huey's really become now. And all these things we see is that Starlight is breaking down and now leaving being a soup more and more becoming human and leading into that and getting rid of Starlight. And as she says in the episode, Annie January, she's not Starlight anymore. And it's the reverse with Huey where he's becoming more and more a soup. Now, Laz Alonzo, another one, just underrated actor. Oh my God, was he amazing in this episode when he has his monologue to Starlight about what happened with Soldier Boy killing his grandpa and explaining why he has OCD about this. And he's like, I woke up, I put him in that spot. So now in the middle of the night, he's checking the burners. If I don't, Soldier Boy's gonna come back and kill my family. When he has that tear come down, wow. And he's like, I gotta get this MRF out of my head. Props to Laz Alonzo here. This was incredible acting. And man, they're really doing great with Mother's Milk's story this, ep- this season and this episode in particular as well. So really, again, Kimiko, Mother's Milk, they're really stealing this season. Just really fascinating character arcs. Now it's interesting. We get this moment with Ashley and A-Train where it's Ashley's best scene to date where she's like yelling at A-Train, calling him out because he wants justice for his brother being paralyzed. And she's like, you want justice? 
and she pulls her hair out, which we know Ashley does when she gets frustrated, and she points out she's covered up three murders for this guy, and he only cares because it happened to him now. She totally nails the character of A-Train. Everything she says to him is totally truthful, and you'll see that kind of reflected too when Huey lays, yells at him later on. So now we can kind of jump and focus on the hero guys and party, which has set up this whole episode to land there as our final scene where all the characters meet. I love that M.M.'s reunited with Love Sausage here. He had first encountered him in season two and had titled that thing the love sausage and love sausage gets to hear it now and is like oh i like that name so we know he's a character from the comic and that is his name in the comics a nice touch here that when starlight enters the hero gasm party that a starlight dildo flies right across from her i thought that was great and i like mm mentions how messed up the hero gasm party is because this is straight from the comics where these soups will bang these social workers and a lot of them are in pain from it, from their powers are using on them to get this sexual pleasure. This was a big theme in the comics. And we see even Termite's back here, gets an appearance and gets that stuff onto M.M. And Termite will be brutally killed by Homelander and Ivy Nosing and stepping on him, which I thought was great. And poor M.M. here, not only does he get this on him from Termite, he literally opens the wrong door and gets all of that on him which was absolutely disgusting poor mm and just seeing huey when he arrives teleport for soldier boy to scout out the twins it's just so funny every time he teleports and he gets naked i think it's just hysterical it totally works and see now huey's doing what he's always wanted to do confront a train now but more powerful he's like you never said sorry for robin and a train actually finally does say sorry and he this guy finally gets a pain someone have losing someone they love because he's finally experienced it himself and huey still punches him and you see where huey is even when they got there ignoring his better judgment from the past where he sees a little worried that soldier boy might hurt others in this process of getting the twins but he ignores that and starlight's trying to remind him of that like you're so focused on what your goal is you're not worried about these innocent people and when soldier boy does show up huey teleports him and annie which was also hysterical because then Annie and him are both naked and they get to kind of hash it out. And Huey admits like he doesn't like that she's more powerful than him, even though he said in the first day he didn't bother him. So this crushes Starlight here and it's really kind of showing Huey's true colors now. He doesn't want to be the one being saved anymore. And like I said, this is where it comes full circle for Starlight that she realizes it's not the drugs, this is Huey. And I'm so happy that when Huey tries to block her from going back that starlight gets to use her powers here it's been teased so much i feel like we haven't seen her use them in forever i almost forgot what they even do so that was nice to see that it's been ages so it's interesting when soldier boy confronts the twins they try to put the blame on noir but what's interesting is that soldier boy actually doesn't buy it because he's like noir wouldn't do anything without vault's approval so noir might get a free pass here from soldier boy but it's actually the russian music again that triggers soldier boy to just use his power do this blackout and killing the twins in the process and others but i'm wondering when people are going to figure out it's that exact music that's triggering him i think that's going to come back probably in the finale when someone needs to use soldier boy for their advantage now the only thing here is when he does blow up and you see him spin around the house it's pretty crazy that a train and the deep come out unscathed they're literally leaving a house that just blew up they have no scratches or anything and even a stretch here that Butcher and M.M. would even be alive after this. But, all right, I'll let it pass, but it's a stretch. And also, I feel like a lot of these soups here, especially A-Train and Deep, would at least, wouldn't they lose their powers at this moment? Be just being in the vicinity of that blast doesn't make much sense to me. But I do love, I mean, I loved this scene with A-Train and Blue Hawk and what a gruesome way to show the use of a train speed power of him dragging him on the road i thought that was incredible and creative and i thought that it was the sickest kill in this show to date i would have never predicted a train with speed powers would have the best kill so far but to me he did that is that feeling of the boys comic where it's so dark and like disturbing how that happened and that it led to a train probably we haven't confirmed it, but probably dead now, killing himself with that heart attack and that he has that problem where his heart rate goes up if he uses his power. So that was just awesome. And I think that would be a really good closing point for A-Train because he got his realization of really from hearing from Ashley and Healy, all he's done wrong, but also getting his justice on Blue Hawk, who also is a piece of shit. So I think it just kind of works. So the moment we all have been waiting for, I can't believe it even happened this episode. I did not think we'd actually get 
Homelander versus Soldier Boy till the finale. But it happens here, and we also get Butcher and Huey involved. So it really was Homelander versus Soldier Boy, Butcher and Huey, which is good. You want it to be realistic of someone who can actually put up a fight with Homelander and be kind of a team up. I mean, come on, guys. We all, this episode's Hero Gasm, but we all had the uh, nerd gasms here when you have Homelander saying, You were my hero growing up. You were the only one nearly as strong as me. And Soldier Boy's like, You think you look strong. You're wearing a cape. You're a cheap knockoff. And Homelander gets the best line. He's like, No, I'm the upgrade. And we get to see Homelander fly into him, which was just crazy. This was some awesome action here. And I love that Butcher got his moment versus Homelander and that. You know, it's so important that he has that same power as Homelander coming out of the eyes. That's a lot of symbolism there, too, that they're of the same cloth. That's not just a coincidence. And we get to see Carl Urban, when he's fighting Homelander, do that crazy butcher face. Nobody does crazy face as good as Carl Urban. It's like he's literally ripping that kind of face you'd only see in comic books and putting it on the screen perfectly. And Huey's humorous entrance again with the naked teleporting was brilliant. I thought that was great and that they actually made him useful here. And I love they all try to pin down Homelander and that you even get a moment where Butcher wants Huey to leave because he cares for him like we saw at the Flash last episode of seeing Huey like his younger brother and that he doesn't want to lose Huey and wants him to leave but Huey's in for the long haul here and this obviously if you're a big Marvel fan is reminiscent of the scene from the Avengers with Thanos being pinned down by the Avengers, almost getting him in Infinity War, and then he breaks free. And with Homelander breaking free and flying away, I am 100% convinced now of two things, that he's going to be full on that other side of the mirror mode where he's, you know, no humanity left in this guy. He's just going to be a complete evil monster and just have chaos happen now, especially with the cliffhanger with what Starlight does. But also I'm convinced, like my theory's been that Homelander's gonna die this season. I think still, I know he's the best character in the show and he's so important, but for the story, I don't know how we can do another season with this. Like it's a perfect kind of ending coming for him. Like it's peak, especially if they just did a fake out of him almost dying here. They can't double up on that in the finale if he fights again, right? That would just be too repetitive and too much teasing. So I think he's gonna die in the finale. I'm really convinced on that. I think it would actually be a nice wrap to the season storyline and for the story of Homelander. How much further can we go of seasons of him teasing, of him almost breaking? And I think we kind of got to hit that climax now. And you see how important just little facial moments are of when Huey, Butcher are walking out with Soldier Boy that they make eye contact with Starlight and Mother's Milk, a former bond and trust there is now broken. And we get this big, big cliffhanger that starlight goes insta live i did not expect this and out soldier boy and homelander not just one of them both of them and she's like i'm not starlight anymore my name is andy january and i quit what a freaking cliffhanger with the pumped up music in the credits can there be a better episode six in a season i don't think so this episode was incredible i'm giving it a 9.8 it's losing 0.2 points because of the Imagine thing being a little too on the nose for my taste and maybe some of the stuff with the Nina scene and the choreography and that action could have been a little better, especially with Sherry, but overall, incredible episode. I mean, this is how you do it and I feel like this show is at its peak right now. It's rolling and a lot of really good shows kind of that happens in season threes where everything's coming together, set up from season one and two and goddamn that fire truck is just gonna go on doing this and it's all hitting it's like climax now and it's just rolling the show is rolling and i'm gonna say from this episode that this is better than season one because if you actually look at how consistent this season's been i think it's been more entertaining and consistent than season one was so i think it's already past it and i can't wait to see what these final two episodes do I am pumped. Let me know down below what your theories are. And please, if you could subscribe, it helps me in so many ways. There's a lot of people covering this show right now. So I need any support I can get. I really appreciate that. I'm trying to do the best I can for you guys. And just a little help. I really appreciate it. And please follow me at Steve Varley Show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for more of me. And I'll see you next time.